All right, it's time for my favorite system of all time, guys, and that is the Sega Dreamcast. I'll show you guys what I own. Some of these games I grew up with, some of them I bought more in the last, you know, several years to kind of add to my collection now. And now, not a lot of people grew up with the Dreamcast. You know, I only knew one person growing up that even had it. Um, but my friends would come over to my house and play it and loved it. You know, the Dreamcast, I think, is such an underrated system and a really unique system that still is kind of ahead of its time. So, so many quality games. Let's get into what I have. Uh, a system I'm definitely going to be collecting a lot more for to get more games and play. Starting off with Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare. This is a wonderful survival horror game. What a, what a banger to start off with here. This is a double case game because it, I don't know, it's, a, it's got two, it's a two disc game? Yes, two discs. Got the manual and everything. Um, this has one of the best atmospheres of any survival horror I've ever played. Uh, it's a really, really great game. I thoroughly enjoyed this playthrough. Uh, not one I grew up with or anything, one I kind of bought more recently. Um, also released on PS1 and PS2. I heard the PS2 version is terrible, so stay away from that one. You want this one or the PS1 version are the best versions of the game. But um, man, this is such a good I mean, good game. Dreamcast has a lot of good horror games. This is one of them, I have to say. Uh, I'm so glad I have that one. Next up we have, speaking of horror, we have Blue Stinger. Uh, I like this game and I also hate this game. I don't know what to say. It's just, it's a jank. It's got that perfect amount of jank to it, much like a Hercules 64 or Two Worlds on the 360. Uh, it's a survival horror, but the only thing horrible about this game might be the uh, jankiness and the, uh, the combat. It's, it's hard and there's a lot of like really like annoying parts you have to get through. I made it to the final boss, but I haven't been able to beat him for some reason I still can't beat him I'll have to try and beat him again but it's a fun enough playthrough you know there's a lot of like decent sections there's some fun music it's definitely a unique game worth checking out if you're a fan of survival horror you know you're not really gonna play another game like Blue Stinger that's for sure the voice acting is also hilarious uh, next we have well, this is a good find this is a good one this is bust a move 4 I found this one in a shop for 20 bucks complete and I was very surprised because this place doesn't normally have Dreamcast games. I kind of just saw it there and was like, oh, let me pick this one up and play through this one. This is a heck of a good game. I love these kind of like puzzle games and it's super fun. Bust a move four on the Dreamcast. Next we have a classic that if you got a Dreamcast, you're probably going to own. That's Crazy Taxi, of course, you know, fantastic arcade like little action game um, I mean most of us have probably tried it out at this point in one way or another but this is the version that is the best version on home console and that is the Dreamcast one Dreamcast was so good at emulating arcade games you know like porting them to Dreamcast it really felt like the arcade was at your home and that's I think that's why the Dreamcast is my favorite system uh, next we have Dave Mira Freestyle BMX. I actually haven't tried this game yet, but got it for really cheap. I imagine it's going to be kind of like a Tony Hawk game, but for BMX bikes. So we'll see. You know, I'll, and I'll pretty much buy any Dreamcast game. There weren't a ton of games released in North America for Dreamcast, so um, I'm going to get what I can for it. You know, I don't need every single game to be satisfied, but I'll buy what I can. There's a lot of heavy hitters I don't have that are uber expensive that you know one day maybe I'll start buying some of those next we have Dino Crisis this is one I got in a little bit of a Dreamcast lot I have not played this yet though this is a survival horror from Capcom who obviously did Resident Evil so I'm assuming this is going to be pretty good Dino Crisis um, really looking forward to trying that one out next we have another one I don't even know much about this also came in that lot and that is Draconis, a Cult of the Worm. I don't even know what kind of game this is. I'm intrigued by it. When I go to play it, I'm gonna go in completely blind, not knowing even like what type of game or gameplay I'm getting myself into, but it looks kind of like a fantasy, maybe RPG or action adventure, I'm not sure. But um, I don't know, the art style is pretty good. I'm intrigued. I think it could be end up being like a little bit of a hidden gem, maybe. 
Here's an awesome RPG on the Dreamcast. Evolution, the world of sacred device. Man, this is a good RPG. Charming as all hell. Great music. Um, great battle system. Good story. I really, really love this game. Um, there's a sequel that I still need to get, Evolution 2, so I need to pick that up at some point and play through that one as well because this is a really good RPG that I highly recommend. Next we have Fighting Force 2. This is probably the worst Dreamcast game I own, honestly. I didn't want to hate it as much as I do, but I can't help it. It's just it's so bad. <laughs> oh, like the way the game controls is so annoying and the enemies are very frustrating to a hit. And I remember playing the first Fighting Force on like N64 and it wasn't this bad, but yeah, this one's not good. Actually, I shouldn't say this is my least favorite Dreamcast game. My least favorite Dreamcast game comes up later, but I'm not going to say many of these are bad because most of the Dreamcast games I own are really good. They've been really fun, the ones I've played. Uh, Dreamcast doesn't really have a lot of bad games from what I know, but I'd say this is probably one of them. Not the worst thing in the world you'd play, but definitely not something worth seeking out if you uh, have a Dreamcast. On the complete contrast to that, this is a reason to buy a Dreamcast, and that is Gauntlet Legends on the Dreamcast. This is one I grew up with. It really, this is why I love dungeon crawlers to this day, dungeon crawling RPGs, because of this game right here. I grew up playing this and just loving it, playing with friends, playing with my brothers. Uh, man, just an awesome game. I mean, I absolutely love this game. I actually beat it for the first time, though, on stream. Because I never beat this back in the day somehow, but we would start a game over and over again. We would, I think we, the problem is we never saved. We always just like started a game, played for a few hours, then just turned it off or whatever and played something else. And then if we ever played it again, we would start it over again. But a heck of a great game. Gone Legends. If you like dungeon calling RPGs, this is a must play. Um, one of my favorite Dreamcast games right here. And again, that's, the, that's my copy that I had uh, growing up. Next we have The Grinch, 3D platformer from Konami. Oh, this game is, uh, it's bad, but it's not the worst. I, I don't know, it's got a charm to it. I, there's like, like the first level I kind of like, even the second level is not that bad, but later you get in this game, the worse it gets. That's the problem. It's like, if it kind of stayed even keel throughout, this would have been a decent hidden gem of a 3D platformer, but it just gets so bad, but it's a memorable playthrough. The Grinch for the Dreamcast, guys. There's not a lot of 3D platformers on the Dreamcast, so that's kind of why I wanted that to play one. And it's not that great. Next we have Heavy Metal Geomatrix. I haven't tried this one yet either. This is from Capcom. It is a, uh, a fighting game, a 3D fighting game, I believe, with like heavy metal music and stuff. I don't even know if I'm allowed to stream this with the music. Maybe I'll have to turn the music off, but um, this could probably be really fun. I don't know how much this game goes for now, but there it is. Heavy Metal Geo Matrix. Here's uh, another one I grew up with, and that's House of the Dead 2. Obviously a fantastic arcade game, and it plays so well on the Dreamcast. This is such a great, great game. If you have a Dreamcast, you got to have this game. I love playing this one, throwing it on for a little bit. So one of the reasons why I do enjoy rail shooters is because I grew up with this one on my Dreamcast. Next we have Jeremy McGrath Supercross 2000. This is kind of a surprise hidden gem. Honestly, I think this game is really good. It does get hard in like the season mode or whatever, but man, this game is fun. Like uh, the way it controls the tracks and everything. I have a good I have a good time every time I put this on. I think it's it's a cheap game too. It's not going to cost you a lot. Uh, there's some good music in the game, like Offspring and stuff um, from Acclaim Sports. Yeah, a good motocross game for sure. Uh, next we have Monaco Grand Prix. This is another decent kind of game on the Dreamcast. Uh, a little racing game. Very hard, but uh, it's more of a sim racer. So if you're a fan of like Forza or Gran Turismo, it's more along the lines of that in terms of sim racing. So for the time, you know, it's pretty impressive that they were able to get a pretty well sim game on the Dreamcast. Monaco Grand Prix. Really good tracks in this one, but it's hard. I can't even like... I can't win races in that. It's so freaking hard. You have to be like perfect. 
Next we have NBA 2K, the beginning of the 2K series, a good start for this one. Uh, the beginning of a franchise, definitely worth checking out. But where they nailed the 2K series was NBA 2K1. Here it is. This is the greatest basketball sim ever made, still for my money. Grew up with this one, and oh man, I, I put so many hours. I played an entire 76er season with full 12-minute quarters back in the day. I ended up losing in like the second round of the playoffs to like the Pacers or something by like two points. It was like heartbreaking. I think it was like game seven too. So it was a hell of a season to play through. Uh, obviously, this is when the Sixers were really good with AI, Matumbo, Matt Geiger, George Lynch, Eric Snow, Aaron McKee, all those guys. Um, this is still holds up really, really well. Such a good game. Had the black top in it too, I believe. Um, you know, had some classic players. This is a must-own on the Dreamcast. Sega Sports really were the best at making sports games back then with 2K, baseball, hockey, uh, basketball, football, they were just the best at it, really. It's a shame that they've kind of like died down, but um, man, I wish they would make the 2K basketball games like this again. I, this is just such a good game, such a good game. Uh, my favorite Dreamcast game right here, Nightmare Creatures 2. This is another one, my copy that I grew up with. I don't even know how I acquired this game. Maybe I got it for like a birthday or something. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> this is a, a really, really good horror game. Kind of a mix of a survival horror with like an action horror game with some platforming. Atmosphere, 100% nails it. So the best way to probably to play this game would be to, obviously, don't emulate it. If you have a Dreamcast, get the game. Put it in your Dreamcast, play it on that, hit the lights, no distractions, turn off the phone, and just soak in the atmosphere of the game, the the uh, the, the, the ambiance of the game, because it is like creepy and it's just, I don't know, it's, there's something about this game that just attracts me in so many ways. I love it. I can't speak highly enough of it. The combat's really good. It's surprisingly more complex than you think. It's not just hack and slash. It's like you have to time your blocks and your attacks and your combos really well to defeat some enemies. Um, the level design's brilliant. Uh, it's just, oh my goodness, I love this game so much, so much. Here's one I haven't tried yet, and that's Omicron, oh, Omicron, Omicron, the Nomad Soul. I've heard different things about this game. I didn't know about this one growing up, but I picked it up from a game shop because it looked really interesting. You know, music by David Bowie. There's actually, whoop, there's Bowie on the cover right there. Um, I really don't know what to expect from this game. It's from Eidos, maybe a mix of like Deus Ex and something else. Um, the graphics look decent on the back. But I haven't really seen this game in action, so. I don't know. I'll have to check it out sometime, but I, you know, I wanted to get that one. So that'll be kind of a unique buy for the Dreamcast. You know, the, one of those games that you can only get on the Dreamcast. Here is Quake 3 Arena. This is a great first-person shooter. Now, the Dreamcast is not known for FPSs, obviously. There's not a lot on there. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted this game, was to get an FPS on there and to see how it was. And the controls get take some getting used to, but after you do get used to them, you really enjoy the game. Like I played through this, it was hard to get through each tier, but it was uh, it was a lot of fun. This was a you know old school first person shooter kind of game, like a Doom. If you like Doom, the Quake games are usually pretty good. This one does have you know uh, multiplayer as well, up to four players. So you could still throw this in probably with four controllers and have a great night playing this game, trying to kill each other. Um, yeah, really, really good. Now, I gotta say, I'm impressed with it. Uh, Quake 3 Arena. I like that one. Here's another one that I really ended up liking way more than I thought I was going to. And that's Ready to Rumble Boxing. When I threw this in, I did like a Dreamcast stream a few years ago. 
of just, you know, random stuff. So they're throwing in some games I hadn't tried yet or haven't played much of on the channel. And this was one of them that I threw in that I had bought from a lot. And I ended up playing it for like hours because I was like, you know, this is so good. And I went through like the whole story mode or something. And this one controls so, so good. A fantastic boxing game with arcade like feel to it and over over the top characters that are a lot of fun super good game high high recommendation for me ready to rumble boxing the hot new ready to rumble boxing <laughs> get it while supplies last uh next we have resident evil code veronica on the dreamcast another one that i really wanted and picked up because uh, i've heard good things about this one now this game I kind of have mixed feelings with. I do really, really enjoy it. I love the atmosphere. The gameplay is like obviously really good. And it captures that survival heart essence, of course. But what I don't like about it is how freaking unforgiving the game is. So I got to a point in the game where I literally can't continue because I don't have the resources to continue. There's nothing I can do. I can't go back to a place and get more resources if I needed them because I needed to ration my resources a little bit better, I guess. Which, you know, I didn't know it was gonna get to this point where I was gonna get like kind of soft locked in this area fighting this uh, tyrant um, on, this, on this plane. So I'm stuck on there fighting it without, you know, the good weapons that I need and not a lot of health either. So I'm literally gonna have to start the game over from the beginning, go all the way through the game again and make sure that when I get to that point I have proper resources to fight it with you know I you know I was I didn't know what was to come in the game I was playing a blind playthrough kind of using a walkthrough at times to help myself out if I got stuck but I'm literally at a point where I, I, I just can't continue which is unfortunate because I enjoyed it and I wanted to keep going with it but uh, we didn't even get to Chris's part yet I think it was at the end of her part which I didn't even know there was a split Campaign. I thought at the end of her part it was going to be the end of the game, but I was informed that there's a whole other part that you play. So that's a hard game. Good game, but unforgivingly hard, I would say. On the Dreamcast version, anyways. Next, we have a good hidden gem Rippin' Riders. This is an awesome snowboarding game. If you like SSX or Snowboard Kids or anything like that, probably going to like this game. One of the cheapest games I bought for my Dreamcast and definitely a hidden gem. I love the music. The gameplay is really fun. Um, just a solid snowboarding game. If you like that kind of arcade like gameplay, probably going to enjoy Rippin' Riders. Uh, here's one. There's another one I grew up with, and that's Sega Bass Fishing. This is my copy still from a kid. A uh, fun, janky little fishing game. I do want to actually pick up some more newer aged fishing games and check them out and see how they are. Uh, I'd like, like a sim fishing game would be kind of nice. But this is funny. I don't know. We just, my friend and I would throw this in time to time and have a good time. I don't even know why I own this game. <laughs> I'm not even into fishing really. I've only fished a couple times in my life. I do enjoy fishing, but I wouldn't say I'm an expert or anything. Uh, I just, I don't know why I acquired this game, but I'm glad I did uh, when I was younger. It was probably like, I like it, maybe I got like a yard sale or something. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's definitely fun. It's a classic. It's Sega Bass Fishing. It's a classic arcade-like game. Next we have Shenmue. My goodness, what a great game. What a great game. Uh, didn't play this one growing up. And I didn't even like know about this game growing up, honestly. I didn't, you know, having a Dreamcast, you think I would have, but I, for some reason I didn't. And I uh, picked it up later in life, a few years ago, and played through it, and I absolutely enjoyed it. I did pick up Shenmue 2 for my Xbox, so I'll have to play that at some point. But this is a unique game that I think everybody needs to, to play if you have a Dreamcast. It's unlike anything else you'll play on the system. It's unlike really any game I've ever played, honestly. It's so... It's so well done. Um, some people might think it's boring or something. I don't. I think it's just, just an incredible exp gaming experience that I think I'm really glad that I took part in. And this has, you know, the manual, everything in there, complete. It's like a four-disc game or something. Three discs, I think, something like that. Awesome game. And again, you can see my entire playthrough on YouTube if you want to check that one out. We have a great fighter, Soul Calibur. That's something I don't have a lot of. 
In fact, I think this is this and Heavy Metal Geomatrix are the only fighting games I have on Dreamcast because the fighting games are really expensive now, like Street Fighter Third Strike, you know, Power Stone 2, all that. They're super expensive on the Dreamcast. But luckily, I have this one. Uh, one of my favorites, probably, fighting games ever is this original Soul Calibur. So good and it holds up extremely well. Just fun arcade fighting. Can't go wrong with that on the Dreamcast. Dreamcast is, uh, if there's two types of games on the Dreamcast that are probably best, it's survival horror and probably fighting games. Honestly, they do. They do really well in anything that's, like, arcade-like. But... That's the thing about the Dreamcast, they have a little bit of everything, a little bit of everything, and whatever they do, they pretty much do really well. Alright, this next game is actually like a burned copy that uh, was given to me. And Star Wars Jedi Power Battles, I kind of include it here because I don't think this really fully works though, so I'm actually going to end up buying this game eventually for the Dreamcast. I don't, I don't think it's too expensive. Um, Obviously, like, my brother owned this game growing up. If you haven't played Star Wars Jedi Power Battles, um, it's a fun Star Wars, like, beat-em-up kind of game. So, I have to, I don't know, maybe I gotta test that again, see if it works, or, um, if not, I'll have to buy, like, an actual copy of my Dreamcast, which I'm probably gonna do anyways, just to have it, because I don't like having this burned copy sitting there, but it's all I have right now, that one. That's the thing about the Dreamcast, people could, like, burn games, and it would work. It's kind of weird. That's the only one we ever had, though. Um, next, you have Striker Pro 2000, a soccer game now. Not many on the Dreamcast, maybe only two or three that were released in North America. This is one of them. And it's pretty decent. It's not the worst thing. I don't know. It, like, I had fun with this. This is one that I had growing up, so this is my copy, again, from when I was younger. Um, you know, we used to have fun with this game, me and my brother. I think you could like edit teams or something in this game too, much like a Pro Evolution Soccer, but uh, gameplay's not too bad. Like uh, I'll throw it in again at some point and try it out. Remember it not being the worst thing for a soccer game, you know, in the Dreamcast. There's not many to choose from, so there you go. Uh, next we have another pretty good game, Surf Rocket Racers. Pick this one up. It's, you know, like Wave Race, their little take on Wave Race, I guess. So if you like the jet ski kind of games, Splash Down or Wave Race, probably like this one. This one is pretty hard, but uh, there's some cool tracks in this one. And I do enjoy what I've played of it. I just can't quite beat the game because there's, I think they got like the checkpoints all wrong or something. Because like no matter how well you do on this one race, I can't reach the checkpoint before the timer runs out. I really don't know what to do. It's just extremely hard. Uh, back to 2K Sports, we have Tennis 2K2. I actually haven't played this one. I haven't tried it before. Um, I picked this one up because I'm a fan of tennis games too. I, I picked this up this year. I'm really looking forward to trying this one because it's a 2K game and it's tennis. It's got the Williams sisters on the front, so you know it's going to have licensed tennis players uh i bet i just have a feeling this is going to be really good so i'm looking forward to playing that one if it's anything like virtual tennis it'll be awesome here's another hidden gem tnn motorsports hardcore heat i spent almost nothing on this game and uh it turned out to be really fun i played like hours of it on one stream and we had a great time with it uh really, really good controls um the way everything handles and some fun races to do. There's, you know, different like elements that you kind of race in, snow and, and rain. So it's, uh, if you like little like racing games, kind of sim mixed with arcade, it's not really one or the other. It's kind of a, a hybrid of the both, but really, really good. I don't know. I like that game. I think it's a nice little Dreamcast game that wouldn't, that won't break the bank at all. It's pocket change for that one. And now, this is the worst Dreamcast game I own. For real, this time. I despise this game. I tried to play it on the channel. I got up near the end of the game, painstakingly, hours and hours and hours and hours, and streams and streams, and frustrations, and tediousness, of following a walkthrough step by step, 
and going through so much torture only to be soft locked like five minutes from the end of the game which only uh, cements this game as my least favorite Dreamcast game and one of my least favorite video games I've ever played and that is Tomb Raider Chronicles I hate this game I want to just chop it into my wall right now uh, I don't think there's a game I've ever played on the channel or in my life that had me more frustrated than this game like even Catwoman which you guys know I hate that game on PS2 uh, I think this game made me more angry than that game this was like just the worst kind of game to try and play through. I don't know what it is, the controls I cannot get the hang of on the Dreamcast. If this is how old the, all the old Tomb Raider games play, I want no part of any more of them. I didn't grow up with the old Tomb Raiders, so this is the first old Tomb Raider game I actually played. And I, I freaking hate it. I played the newer series, the new trilogy, which I absolutely love. Those games are so well done and a series that I hold dear to my heart. But this, this is not Tomb Raider. I mean, this is the worst of the worst. Oh my gosh. I just dare you to try and play through this game on the Dreamcast. And see how far you can get with these controls and the jumps and stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh, I hate that game. I hate it. <laughs> Next we have... I mean, if I was AVGN, I'd be doing... I know AVGN technically covered this game before, right? Because he featured it in his Tomb Raider game. But we didn't go over this game enough. He must have not sat down and tried to play the whole game. Because if he really did, he would have seen how bad it is and how frustrating it can get. I would have a lot to say about that game if I was an AVGN type of reviewer. Next we have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Um, again, didn't grow up with this one. Uh, I didn't really play the Tony Hawk games growing up, so I picked this one up. I like it. I can see why people uh, revere this game. I didn't. I don't know. It's. I have my issues with it though. I'm pretty sure you know Tony Hawk Two or Three is probably going to be better when I play that. But definitely a good skating game. But I wouldn't say this like wowed me or something I fell in love with or anything. It's like it's just you know it's a cool game, it is what it is. But I have a feeling the other ones are going to be better than the original. But you know it's definitely a game I'm glad to have. It's a staple in, uh, in gaming, I'd say, that series. All right, next we have Trick Style. This is an interesting little hoverboard racing game. It's okay. It's not bad. Like, again, didn't love it. Didn't hate it. Can get frustrating at times, but there's some cool tracks, some decent music. Uh, you know, it's all right. It's all right of a game. It's, it's not, ex it's not uh, expensive either, so Trick Style. We have Vigilante 8, Second Offense on the Dreamcast. Now, I played one of the Vigilante 8 games growing up. I can't remember if it was this one or the first one on N64. And I remember loving it a lot. So I found this one on the Dreamcast. Thought, oh, I gotta get this because I remember this series. So this will be a little bit nostalgic. So we'll have to stream this sometime and check it out. Second Offense, probably gonna be good. And here's another classic that you gotta have on the Dreamcast. Virtua Tennis, awesome arcade tennis game, but it has surprisingly decent simulation feel to it as well. It kind of blends those two styles seamlessly. And uh, yeah, just a game you gotta have. Even if you're not even a fan of tennis or sports games, you probably like this game. It's that good. It's just fun to throw on and, you know, hit the ball back and forth, play some tennis. It's like Pong or something, you know? You gotta have fun with it. And the last game I have is World Series Baseball 2K1, a game I did grow up with. This is not my copy from when I was a kid. I actually don't know what happened to that copy. So I bought this one. Unfortunately, this one does not work all the way. Like, it freezes sometimes and won't read. So I didn't think there was anything too wrong with the disc, but um, I have to rebuy this game. It's not an expensive game. I can probably get this game for $10 or less, so... It's not like I'm rushing out to go get it before it goes up in price or anything. So whenever I want to feel like playing this game again, I'll probably just rebuy it. Um, even if it's just the disc, I don't even need the case or anything. I just need a working disc. But this is a really good baseball game. My friends and I would play this. Like I said, they would come over and play my Dreamcast. This is one of the games they wanted to play because they were all into sports. So we'd play this. We'd play like 
Gauntlet Legends or something. Um, and we play NBA 2K1. But this one we, were, we would have a lot of fun with. It's a very good simulation style. I need to play this one again. That's why I need to get a working copy because I haven't played this in a long, long time. And we'd love to, love to play it again. And there it is. There's my entire Dreamcast collection as of right now. I'm um, having a little problem with my current Dreamcast of it, like reading games. It's kind of like scratching them, which one of my old Dreamcasts started doing too. So I don't really know what's going on with that. So I haven't been buying any Dreamcast games really over the past year or so. Um, once I get a working Dreamcast again, I'm definitely going to start buying more stuff for it and streaming it more because, like I said, it's my favorite system. Um, it's right up there with the N64. Oops, let me, uh, the camera's getting moved around here. Um, and definitely a system that I hold dear to my heart. I have a lot of nostalgia for. There's the Grinch. Um, a system that if you haven't played, definitely if you get an opportunity to play it, check it out. I mean, it's, it's a unique system that still does things that you know systems today don't even do with like the memory card thing and, and all that. Um, the way they had the little screens on the memory card. Uh, it's a really good arcade ports and all that. I say once I get a working system again, we'll definitely do more Dreamcast. Uh, this and the N64 are my favorite systems. Uh, the N64 may surpass the Dreamcast one day, I gotta say. I really love the N64 too, but can't go wrong with the Dreamcast. But uh, thank you all for watching so much. Take care of yourselves, and until next time, Zero is in the loop.